it's this one hypothesis test for the population means paired comparisons so um, I, I, I was talking you through this one the other day I just want to show you how to do it real quick because it used to be that you could just grab this information here and stuff it in the Alex calculator but that doesn't work anymore for some reason so if I was trying to figure out the standard deviation on this one I just click and drag on it and it doesn't populate anymore so they changed something in the Alex calculator which is a pain in the butt but um, you can use Microsoft Excel to fix this problem for you and so I'm just going to show you how to do that here real quick and if you don't have Microsoft Excel, you can still do it in the Alex calculator. Just understand that when you pull the mean and the standard deviation, you got to punch all of these numbers into here in order to get that. <laughs> so not fun, um, but at the same point in time, doable. All right, so let's uh, just run through this one here real quick. I did a couple of these the other day. Hopefully I don't jack them up too bad and this doesn't take too terribly long. So uh, here we go. Hypothesis test for the difference of population means. All right, so th there, there is um, um, a new key here, and that's this guy, mean D. So this is the difference between the means. All right, and so that's what we're doing here. So we're just taking a look at two different variables. All right. Well, in this case, two different samples that are doing the same thing, and you're just taking one and subtracting the other one to get the difference between them. So difference process one, process two. So you notice that all those numbers line up. When you do hypothesis tests for multiple samples, that's exactly what you're doing, okay? Um, but with this one, it gives you the difference, and so you just do a hypothesis test on the difference between these. Now, this is a sample, not a population, so we're going to use the T-score on this one, or the T-value. All right, so here we go. Based on these data, company concluded at the 05 level of significance that the mean assembly times for the two processes differ. So differing processes means a two-tailed test. And so with a two-tailed test, it's mu D does not equal zero. Okay, so, and then mu D equals zero as our null. So think about this. If, you know, the first process was better than the second process, when we subtract the two, we would be left with a remainder that was positive. If it was the other way around, it would be negative. So, but if it's exactly the same, it would be zero. All right, and so I hope that makes sense. So test statistic on this one is T. And then uh, degrees of freedom, of course, is our sample size minus one. We've got 10 workers, so 10 minus one gives us nine. Okay. Value of the test statistics. So if you get confused on this, just remember, pull up your list of formulas here. And uh, it's this one right here. Estimate mu, uh, whether testing mu equals a certain value with an unknown standard population standard deviation. <clears throat> so we're going to use this guy. Just remember, you have to put the uh, the mean over it. All right. So I'll show you what I mean by that. All right. So you know you could calculate the mean here by punching by hitting this button and then punching in all these values here. Uh, screw that. We're going to use Microsoft Excel. So just grab all this data. Do a Control C. Tab over to Microsoft Excel. Bam. There we go. You notice this last column here is jacked up. Just double click right there uh, between the whatever these two columns are. <laughs> and uh, it'll open that one up. This is the data that we need right here. To calculate standard deviation on this one, just do equals STD or ST, and then it brings up a list of formulas here. Make sure you use this one, standard deviation for a sample, dot S, okay? Double click that, grab all this, give me an enter, and there you go. There's your standard deviation on this one. Uh, we can do the same thing with mean, so you can do equals average, so AV, and then click this, and then grab all this data. And there's our mean right there. Or you can just highlight this data, and right down here, uh, you might not be able to see it because my face might be in the way. There's actually a little ticker down here that gives you the average, all right? So no matter what which one of these columns you, you click on, it'll show you the average down there. So you can just do that rather than type in the formula too. All right, hope that makes sense. All right, so let's do our test statistic here. So remember, it's my sample mean, which is this guy right here, 17.7. Oops. 17.7 all over uh, my standard deviation, which I think you want to do these to three decimal places. Carry your intermediate competitions to three decimal places, yes. So 14.07, 14.080. There we go. And then divide that again by the square root of your sample size, which is 10. All right, so now some people get confused on this one because you say, oh, well, isn't my sample size, since this is a T, this is just a sample, it's actually my degrees of freedom. No, those are two different things. 
<clears throat> degrees of freedom is used to pull up your test statistic and figure your cutoff values, all right? But when we're doing the formula to figure out your t-score or your t-value here, then yes, you just use your sample uh, size, all right? Bam, there we go. Now, with uh, the t distribution, you'll get higher and lower t scores than you would z scores most of the time. And so don't be scared if you get one that's like 3.9 or 4.6 or something like that. If you get something that's like 14, yeah, it's probably wrong. <laughs> but um, don't worry about that too much. Just, you know, the more practice of these you do, the better off you get. All right. And so value of the test statistic here is 3.975. Okay, right? 3.975. And then this one's going to have me use the crit value method. Now, on a two-tail test using the crit value method, it's really easy to do this, all right? Um, you just have to remember to take this level of significance and split it in half. Since we're not just looking at one tail, we're looking at two tails on either side. And so to do that, you just punch it in the T calculator here, so using the T box right here, and take this .05 and split it in half, .025, all right, with 7 or 9 degrees of freedom. There we go. And so that's our crit value there. All right, so it's two-tailed, so it's the bottom end, 262, and the top end, so negative and positive, 2.262. There we go. All right, so using the crit value, and I think all of these problems here use the crit value. I don't think any of them use the p-value, although this thing will make a liar out of me here in just a second. <laughs> so, But um, remember, with the crit value, so anything between these two, all right, I have to actually keep the null. I cannot reject the null. If it's outside of these two, so meaning to be greater than this or less than this, then yes, I do. Since our T stat here, 3.975, is way higher than 2.26, yes, I can actually conclude that there is something funky about one of these processes. All right, so let's give it a check. And there we go. Oh, hey, look at that. I got double credit for that one. <laughs> so I hadn't loaded this in a couple days. I didn't know if it was going to actually do that for me. So anyway, here we go. Um, so that's this this one right here, hypothesis test for difference of population means paired comparisons. So sometimes you get one tail test. Um, actually, most of the time you get one tail test. Just be careful. So remember that this will be greater than, then that means this one is less than or equal to or vice versa on those, okay? And then this, of course, if it's a one tail test, you don't split this in half, all right? Just make sure you're looking at the right end. Of the, of the spectrum. You'll know that because you'll get a crit value that's the opposite sign of whatever this is right there. Okay, so if this one's negative and that one's positive, just, you know, you did it wrong. So two, one minus that, all right? Hope that makes sense. We've covered that quite a bit. So uh, here we go. 